Digital assets, including cryptocurrencies, have a market cap of more than $3 trillion. How big of a problem, Kathy, is market manipulation in this industry? Yeah, that is a fantastic question, Kathy. It's obviously great to be with you and, and let me attack it this way. Uh, really, any opportunity that individuals have to make money, uh, they're going to take it. And when they're bad actors looking to take advantage of things, they're, they're going to find a way. And that's the case with crypto. Uh, it's, it's certainly a newer industry. There are consumers and investors who don't understand it as well. And so there are people who are going to seek to take advantage of that. And so it is uh, certainly something that companies like Solidus Labs are looking to counter. And groups like the Crypto Market Integrity Coalition that we helped found, uh, or CIMIC, uh, are looking to tackle as well. If you are not looking for manipulation, if you're not looking for fraud, um, frankly, you know it's going to be going on. And so that's something that is really a prerequisite for responsible players in the digital asset space, and that's to be monitoring. Uh, and then to have terms and use policies that address uh, what is allowed uh, and, and what is not allowed in terms of trading behavior. Uh, and that's, uh, of course, on top of a regulatory structure. And, and I'm guessing you'll want to get into that uh, in terms of what the state of play is in law and regulation and digital assets, uh, but, but definitely a, a deep topic here. How do you have a sense of how much market manipulation occurs in the crypto industry? I, I've, I've seen the figure that you're citing. Um, there was also a University of uh, Sydney study uh, going back a few years as well that said there were 40 times uh, the number of pump and dumps uh, in digital asset space as in traditional finance. I think I can tell you, at least from what Solidus Labs sees, this is something that is evolving. Uh, there was certainly, uh, I guess, fraud and manipulation that was more prevalent early on, in part because at the beginning, you had a lot of technologists, innovators, they were creating projects, and this was not a concern uh, for them. I mean, that's fairly well spelled out in uh, even public statements by prominent members of the community. But as the community matures, as financial services uh, folks come into this space, who are used to regulation, who are, uh, you get institutional investors who expect and have a responsibility that's a fiduciary duty to their own clients uh, as, the, as the space has continued to mature. We absolutely see more concern about this, more action about it, and therefore more sophisticated types of manipulation uh, than we had before and, and less manipulation. Uh, I would say, again, when you're when you know that you are being watched, when you know that monitoring is happening and that the uh, surveillance capabilities are in place, uh, people are going to behave differently. Uh, the last thing I would say about this market is that it is global. Uh, you mentioned Bitcoin in particular. All of the trading venues where Bitcoin can be traded uh, across the globe, they're subject to different rules and regulations, and, and they are um, you know, extensive, uh, frankly. So there is a difference uh, coming over time between those uh, venues that are in jurisdictions that are regulated uh, and those that are not. And I think from the vantage point we have at Solidus Labs, we're trying to create that line so that it is clear to investors and consumers. Because in the traditional space, uh, you again have more and less regulated parts of traditional finance as well. But investors understand that. They understand when they're uh, in, engaging in more speculative behavior. And so that's the line that needs to be created in the digital asset space as well. Talk to me about the dangers um, of what could happen with the cryptocurrency market if market manipulation is not curbed or addressed by the industry. What could happen? Well, I think it's, it really comes back to, again, the desire for the growth and, and success and thriving uh, of this industry. And again, if, if growth means uh, more investment and more investors, those investors have expectations, they have fiduciary duties. And so that's uh, essentially what this is about. I think it's also, you know, we are dealing with a lot of different trust dynamics uh, in general in, in a lot of institutions. And part of the crypto ethos and part of the benefit of crypto is its transparency uh, and, and people's interest in, in seeing integrity and, and knowing uh, that 
um, you know, they can, uh, that they have a, a clean ecosystem, that they're not being taken advantage of. Those are clear expectations of users in this, uh, in the digital asset markets as in general. And so that's something that um, would be harmed, uh, I think. And that's something that we need to protect and, and promote and something that we are doing that, uh, as I said, through the Crypto Market Integrity Coalition and other partnerships and industry efforts. In other words, if the ecosystem is cleaned up, then more investors will come in and there will be more interest in the crypto space. Is that accurate? Yeah, yes, I certainly believe that. And, and you get back to then again, all the opportunities that blockchain technology brings for some pretty substantial um, transformation of not just our, our financial services system, but certainly also the way that it is regulated. Uh, lots of opportunity to transform that as well. And then so many other uh, facets of society that, that really will benefit, really anything that could benefit from a distributed ledger, uh, in fact, and, and all of the, uh, again, many different uh, industries that are looking at the capabilities of this technology to be more efficient, to be more transparent. The Crypto Market Integrity Coalition was formed just in February, a few weeks ago. Um, and I wanted to ask you, you know, talk to me about the impetus for this formation and um, tell me about one or two concrete things the coalition is doing to address uh, market manipulation. Thank you for asking about it. We're certainly proud at Solidus Labs of, of founding it and really having some great industry partners come with us uh, on it. Um, it was really designed to counter the narrative about the Wild West of crypto, frankly. Um, we know that there are regulatory regimes in place uh, and that market participants, uh, particularly the big exchanges uh, and other market participants are subject to regulation. It's a different question whether uh, you uh, would like to see different regulations in place, uh, but there are regulatory standards in place. And those players are looking at, again, their own users, how to protect their users, uh, how to disclose properly to their investors. So the opportunity for CIMIC was really to, to get that out there so that the public understands that regulators, investors understand how exactly the industry is responding to the regulations in place and promoting market integrity, recognizing how important it is to, again, our growth, uh, to the, the trust uh, and transparency overall in the system. And so CIMIC was designed as both uh, a pledge, a commitment publicly to market integrity and a platform, uh, really a place by which to highlight and talk about all of the things that are being done around market integrity. And I would add too, it's, it's the creation of a line really. Again, those who are subject to regulation uh, are looking to promote market integrity and, and those who are not uh, in this space. And in terms of concrete uh, initiatives and things that we are, are building out of this, as I said, one, one is certainly awareness uh, around uh, the terms and use policies, the regulatory requirements, the, the type of um, surveillance that is being conducted and addressed in the crypto ecosystem, that that's something that uh, users should look for, that they should expect, that should be disclosed to them, uh, and the rules of that are clear. And so it's that conversation about it. And then most uh, pointedly on the initiatives, uh, training is something that I have talked about a, a few times as something that uh, we want to enable uh, through CIMIC. Uh, it's something that um, the industry, you know, just with all of the other things going on and, and you look at what's happening with respect to anti-money laundering concerns uh, associated with the horrific war in Ukraine, you know, th those are things that, that can sometimes, um, you know, fall on the priority list. We think it's important. We think there's some crowdsourcing we can do amongst the members of CIMIC and really develop uh, uh, some quick training programs around market manipulation what to look for, how to look for it. Uh, so I would say training will be one of the nearer term deliverables out of uh, CIMIC. Some critics have talked about how a crypto uh, currency exchanges overall are not doing enough to curb market manipulation. And I wanted to ask you, some of the exchanges are your members of this coalition, and that's great that they've banded together to 
um, to combat market manipulation. I wanted to ask you, have the exchanges indeed fallen short at times at, at preventing market manipulation? And if so, in what way? So with respect to even traditional markets, uh, we know that manipulation does happen. So it is something that you seek to prevent. It is something you seek to identify, uh, certainly report to regulators uh, where that's required and, and where you should, something that you want to see prosecuted uh, so that, again, there is a deterrent uh, associated with that type of bad behavior. And so it, it's really about having a holistic risk management approach. And it is, it's challenging for new organizations uh, and for maintaining, you know, the staffing needs, as I said, the training uh, associated with it. And there are new types of manipulation, too, that are coming about. I mean, you think about um, the world of decentralized finance, about new aspects and, and products coming uh, in the crypto market uh, or in traditional markets. It requires a slightly different approach. It may enable bad actors to come in and take a slightly different approach of their own. So you always need to stay one step ahead of them. Uh, and so I don't want to say that any, any particular exchange is falling down necessarily, uh, but it really is important to have that kind of comprehensive risk-based approach in place so that you understand the risk appetite, you understand where your thresholds are, you understand what you can uh, watch for and what you are watching for and that you are responding to it. And so that's, I think, a challenge for any uh, organization, including those in traditional finance and, and something that we need to keep developing standards around. What type of market uh, regulation, what type of laws or regulation do you think needs to uh, be put in place to curb market manipulation, if any? So I think that gets to a, a more complicated question of, of the players, and I said which which laws apply to them and 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 how they see themselves. But if they are um, engaged at all in in securities trading, then there is a requirement already upon them uh, to actually look for market manipulation and and seek to prevent it. Um, we are obviously a third party provider. Um, we think there's some benefit in having a third party automated solution to support that. Uh, there is an expertise around, again, this type of um, algorithm development, uh, running the algorithms, the benefits of, of understanding what's happening across the markets in the digital asset space, because there are so many. Um, so again, having that, that third party automated expert, I think is, is a useful point, but it's not something that is required uh, regulatorily in a lot of different jurisdictions. Uh, so it's a decision that um, the market participants make based on their own, uh, you know, their own technology stack and their own decisions about building versus buying. Um, so I'd, I'd say that's uh, kind of one question that that often faces them, uh, and is not generally something that is that is regulated uh, across the globe, but is it a few places? Um, the other benefit of of having that third party. Uh, solution too is the opportunity for cross-market surveillance. As I said, certainly the uh, if you just take an exchange, they're responsible for their own uh, ecosystem, their own venue, and what happens inside that venue. But the opportunity for a manipulation and insights that you would gather from peers uh, in the ecosystem, you know, it's it's uh, unusual that a bad actor would only operate in one venue. Uh, they're they're likely to be taking advantage of of their approach in a bunch of different venues, and so the opportunity to share insights across venues, the opportunity to to work as an industry, that's again something that that CIMIC, um is is built to to at least promote the idea of sharing those best practices. The fact that there is this industry coalition shows that it is a major problem, right? I know you mentioned, Kathy, you couldn't really quantify, didn't want to put numbers on it, but it's fair to say that this is a major problem in the industry. Is that correct? I would say it is a, it is a problem in finance, as, as I noted. Uh, I've been um, very happy to see so many of law enforcement and regulators when they get asked this question, you know, saying, uh, you know, is it a particular problem for crypto? The, the answer is, it is a problem uh, anywhere. Uh, it's certainly a problem in fiat. It's a problem in banking. It's a problem in uh, traditional uh, equities. There, there is again that incentive to try to make money uh, for those who are are looking to do that uh, quick uh, and dirty if if they uh, have the opportunity to. 
So that's that's what I would say in response to it. Uh, it absolutely is one that the crypto industry needs to deal with, uh, and that uh, given the the technological innovations, I, I will say that it is a there are particularly unique things uh, about crypto that that are going to mean we're going to continue to have to work on it, uh, and there is a lot to to work through and think about. But in terms of the uh, opportunity, uh, you know, I think it's it's uh, really making sure that we shore up uh, any avenue. Uh, to engage in manipulation or fraud.